Hello and welcome back. In one of our previous lectures, we have looked at uh, how cloud-based platforms are classified. We looked in those lectures that uh, there are two ways to mainly classify cloud platforms. One is service model based and the second one is deployment model based. In the service model based, the variants of cloud platforms that are possible are infrastructure as a service, platform as a service and software as a service. In this lecture, we are going to look at the first variant that is infrastructure as a service. In the subsequent files, we are going to look at more details of this type of cloud variant. The basic idea here is to provide the fundamental computing resources as a service. What it includes is typically storage, networks, processing, etc. And they are offered in the form that makes it usable for the end user. What it means is that when you obtain uh, infrastructure as a service uh, instance from a vendor, you will receive typically a virtual machine which will have uh, some basic operating system installed on it so that the user is able to access the virtual machine from a remote uh, computer and make use of it. And the users are also able to deploy any arbitrary software on that virtual machine. And typically the users uh, do not have much control on the underlying hardware on which the virtual machine that they received from the IES vendor uh, that is running. So for example, they may not be able to change the power modes, for example, of the underlying uh, physical machine. Let's look at the architecture of an infrastructure as a service cloud. An IES cloud setup typically consists of a cluster of machines. One of the machine is typically referred to as a front-end node and the remaining ones are called worker nodes or the cluster nodes or simply the nodes. Typically on each of the cluster nodes you will have some type of a virtualization software installed and also a piece of software which is referred to as a infrastructure as a service control agent. Now this virtualization layer is required so as to create and manipulate and manage the virtual machines which will be running on each of these uh, cluster nodes. And the front end node will have some piece of software which we term as IAS services. These services are required to support the requests coming from the cloud client or the cloud users who are requesting let's say uh, for the creation of different types of virtual machines. So this IES services component that is responsible for typically identifying the, uh, the right cluster node where a particular configuration of a virtual machine can be provisioned or deployed. And also there is a entity called VM image repository it may be part of the node or it may be a separate uh, machine also. So this VM image repository is nothing but a storage where uh, some, some standard uh, virtual machine images are pre-created and kept. A virtual machine image basically has a pre-configured uh, setup for a virtual machine. For example, it might have a particular type of operating system pre-installed and uh, other configuration setups specified. So whenever a request comes, let's say for a machine uh, with the Linux operating system to be created with let's say some amount of storage and uh, some CPU assigned to it, etc. The IES services on the front end node may identify a particular image and instruct cluster node to take that image from here and start a virtual machine on that particular node. Let's look at how the request flow works on a typical IIS cloud. Let's say a user wants to request for a virtual machine uh, which has uh, let's say Linux operating system installed on it and has let's say 2 GB worth of RAM and uh, 2 virtual CPU cores and some amount of uh, hard disk, right? 50, 150 uh, GB worth of it let's say. So typically what happens is this client is going to request connect to the uh, front-end node and submit a request for this particular configuration that it wants. The front-end node may inspect the request and using its uh, infrastructure as a services component it might try to identify a particular cluster node 
on which this configuration that the user requested may be supported. So the front end node tries to identify the node where it can install the particular uh, virtual machine configuration. And then it picks the virtual machine image from the image repository and, and instructs the system to install this virtual machine image on that particular cluster node via using the virtualization layer on that particular node. And once that is done, the information about how to access this virtual machine is sent back to the client. So this information typically will have some sort of IP address, etc., which the user could use to directly connect to the VM and run any application on top of that virtual machine. Now it will also require setting up uh, some SSH keys, etc., so as to securely connect to this. Uh, so I have skipped those steps for just uh, simplifying the overall flow. So typically these are the high level steps that are involved when you want to obtain a virtual machine from an infrastructure as a service cloud vendor. And this first interaction will typically require uh, that you have registered for the infrastructure as a service uh, on the vendor's uh, website. For example, Amazon Web Services. We will see Amazon Web Services as an, as an example in one of the subsequent lectures. Now let's look at uh, slightly more details about the infrastructure as a service cloud's characteristics. So one of the fundamental characteristic is that this type of cloud provides the bare bones basic computing infrastructure. That is, it lets the users request for a particular configuration of storage, compute and networking capabilities. Compute means you may as a user request for some amount of uh, CPU. Right? You may say that I need a virtual machine which has a, uh, n number of virtual CPU and some amount of storage. Storage might include the disk storage as well as the main memory and some networking. You might want to say that I need this kind of a, uh, this, this uh, particular IP address and so on. And the, the provider will offer you a virtual machine with whatever configuration of the underlying resources you have requested. Now. To be able to make use of this virtual machine, this virtual machine should at least have a basic operating system installed so that the user can uh, really connect remotely to that virtual machine and install other software that he or she wants to run on that virtual machine. So in that sense, it is the responsibility of the cloud user, the end user who is requesting uh, the, the virtual machine from a vendor to install and manage any software that he or she wants to run and install on this VM. Infrastructure as a service also allows the users to monitor for any type of infrastructural events such as CPU reaching a particular threshold, CPU on the virtual machine reaching a particular threshold. For example, uh, CPUs, uh, you, you might be running some applications which are CPU intensive and you want to react to those events once a threshold of CPU consumption is reached. So this type of a cloud often has abilities, often provides some mechanisms to let the user know about these events and react to them. React, reacting to them means you might want to set up some rules uh, where, where once a threshold of a resource is reached, you might want to add further more resources. For example, you might be interested in adding more memory once the memory reaches, let's say, 90% of its uh, uh, total capacity of the virtual machine. So this is called auto-scaling. Uh, we'll look at these things further uh, in subsequent lectures. Another characteristic is that there is a very limited control on the host, firewalls, and other networking components that are available through the virtual VMs, virtual machines, uh, that are running on a host uh, machine. And as you might have guessed, this is uh, the most flexible cloud, cloud variant. Uh, flexible in the sense uh, you get a bare bones uh, machine and you are pretty much free to install any type of operating system and any uh, applications on top of that operating system. So in that sense, you have a lot of flexibility in what you can execute and run on the virtual machines and the virtual infrastructure that you receive from a vendor. Amazon Web Services is one of the uh, leading uh, provider of infrastructure as a service cloud. 
what it offers is uh, several services some of the key ones are compute it is uh, termed there as ec2 elastic compute cloud storage simple storage services s3 database several types of it uh, it offers the relational database services simple db etc and also a dns system is offered so what you will typically required to do before you uh, access uh, any of these services amazon requires you to sign up for an account where your identity is uh, typically verified uh, often by a, a phone call back to you once you register for that service Okay, I think that's pretty much it for this lecture, which introduced you to Infrastructure as a Service Cloud. Before we close this lecture, I would like you to try this homework. The Infrastructure as a Service Cloud are set up using some software frameworks. Uh, most common of amongst them are Open Nebula, CloudStack, and Eucalyptus, etc. They are open source projects, freely downloadable software. Uh, you can use them to set up an Infrastructure as a Service Cloud on your machine so you can download these uh, pieces of software from open nebula or eucalyptus etc and try to install an infrastructure as a service cloud on your local machine and just play with it this is a bit advanced exercise and i would like to caution you that it requires you to be familiar with the linux administration you should be able to set up the virtualization software on top of a linux machine and also manage the networking and configure the networking components on it so try it out and I think it should be fun. Thank you.